Hi there. Today I'm going to review uh, in the page to screen section and it's the book Tokyo Vice by Jake Adelstein and it's his account of his uh, time working in Japan. Now Mr. Adelstein uh, initially spent five years studying at Sophia University where he became fluent in Japanese both in speech uh, and writing and, and reading the kanji, the uh, Japanese characters. So he, he ha has a, a rare grasp of uh, the Japanese language uh, for uh, a gaijin, for an outsider. And he decided at the end of this five year stay that he wanted to be a newspaper reporter. Uh, and there were no foreign newspaper reporters in Japan. The newspaper industry back then in the 90s was massive. We were all still reading newspapers. And the newspaper he selected, the Yomiuri, is, was the biggest, uh, one of the biggest in the world actually, but it was the biggest in uh, Japan. Now, um, a lot of people have become newspaper reporters um, by rather casual means, you know, just meeting somebody and getting a job or going to the right pubs in Fleet Street and so on. In Japan, it's different and they have to sit a test and it's uh, almost equivalent to getting into a university. It, it, it lasts for most of a day and it's a very comprehensive test. And so he, he, um, he, he had to sit this, obviously tested his, uh, not just his ability to read uh, the language, but to comprehend uh, political and cultural and news um, stories and rewrite them and so on. So uh, he gets a job and he's immediately at the bottom of the pecking order. Um, he, he's a co-hire junior and uh, everyone else, or virtually everyone else, are senior to him and he has to bring trays of tea around and, and keep the guys <coughs> um, topped up and perform menial tasks and so on. But he quickly um, is put on the police beat and um, it's a real insight into the Japanese society. Now, when I was over there, um, I, I realized I was an outsider. Uh, you, you know, it's very, very hard to understand the Japanese culture. And I was really surprised that even after his extensive uh, stay there, he still uh, found things very, very uh, strange and different. And he lifts the curtain on it for us in, in a very, very interesting way. So. The system of the news reporters in Japan, um, and any of you who, are, who train in traditional martial arts will kind of understand this from the very formal um, idea of everything's passed down from the seniors and the instructor and so on, you don't really question it. And it was the same with the, um, the crime reporting, that you, you were expected to take um, press releases from the police and, and just basically put them in the newspaper and you didn't question anything or um, try to to really um, get to the bottom of cases uh, to any great degree. But in order to um, at least get a degree of um, a scoop or you know beat the opposition and so on, you, you needed to develop sources and just to get some tidbits and, and extra insights into the uh, into the case. And the major police stations and headquarters all have a press club where the journalists and the police mingle. And these are very, very um, uh, casual affairs. Some of them have um, tatami rooms for you to sleep uh, if you're there for a long time and, and brew kits and all sorts of things. The other interesting thing is that the reporters can get the addresses of the uh, detectives to hand it out. And they're expected to cultivate these uh, on a personal level. Now, when this is done in the West, it's regarded as corruption. But this is the 
Japanese system and it's not regarded as corruption at all it's regarded as this is how things are done and um, just as an example he um, is advised to cultivate uh, a senior detective uh, detective Sekiguchi and um, what he, he, he knows he's a family man so he turns up at his house uh, with a very large, the biggest container of ice cream that you can buy. And when he um, rings the bell, uh, the two little girls, the daughters, open the door and um, immediately call him a Tengu, which means a goblin, because uh, he, he's a gaijin, he's a foreigner, and he's got a big nose and big ears, and they start pulling his ears and so on. And he, he kind of befriends the little girls. And um, at first, the detective doesn't want to meet him. So he, he says, says to the wife, OK, well, look, I've got this ice cream. It'll only melt, so please have it and enjoy it. And then as he's leaving, going down the path, the detective, Sekiguchi-san, uh, calls him back and the ice is broken to the point where at subsequent uh, visits, he actually ends up babysitting for the girls and so on. He becomes a real friend of the family. As I say, this... To, to us in the UK is, is a very strange way of doing it. But um, Sekiguchi-san um, does give him a certain amount of information, tells him how things work, who's who in, in, in the uh, Yakuza and so on, and um, really helps his career. Uh, the amazing thing, uh, you know, I, I was told this when I was in Japan, and it, it kind of blew my mind, that the Yakuza are not some secret organisation. They're very open. They have business cards and they give it to you and it tells uh, tells you their affiliation, which, particularly, which particular gumi, which particular uh, army they belong to. And um, their headquarters uh, have, got, have got big signs outside. They're rather large. Uh, they're corporate headquarters. So it's, it's a really strange... Um, really strange system. The other thing is that the police, when, when they've arrested uh, a gangster for a serious crime and he goes to prison, the police will visit his family and make sure they're, they're looked after and also visit him in prison, take messages for him and bring him um, cigarettes and things like this. And it, it's, it's uh, again, it seems strange. And to us, that would, would be um, too close a relationship probably. But it's, it acknowledges the, um, the um, roles that each have to play. Uh, and, and quite often, <clears throat> if, so, if there's been a crime and um, the police raid the Yakuza headquarters, quite often the Yakuza will have like two weeks' notice of this raid. And if there's any arrest to be made, the Yakuza will quite often put the bodies forward. These are the guys you need to lock up. And they're, they're patsies, basically, but by going to prison for the Oyabon, the boss, they um, they get brownie points when they come out. Uh, the book has got many, many insights on Japanese culture. Uh, a, a, a lot to do with the nighttime ec uh, economy. Um, the um, water business, as they call it, the, the nightclubs, um, Shinjuku and uh, Kabuchicho areas that uh, full of nightclubs and hostess bars and, and things like this. And again, it's part of the Japanese scene. Uh, it's not unusual for, you know, both the cops, the reporters and the Yakuza all to be in the same bar. And it, it's kind of... Um, a given that if the police do give you some information and um, it, be, it becomes a little bit embarrassing um, and they're asked about it, they, they just say, well, I was drunk. And that, that covers it. Uh, I don't know what I said, I was drunk. And there's no further uh, action. Uh, so, <laughs> and another insight into um, Japanese culture is that um, Jake Adelstein talks about the most popular books on sale in Japan are manuals, how to do it manuals. The Japanese are absolutely 
uh, enthralled by these and they can't get enough of them. And um, I, while he was there, the number one manual was how to argue with Koreans. And then there were various other manuals and I think number three or four was how to commit suicide. Um, an activity that the Japanese have embraced uh, quite enthusiastically. So one of the main cases in the book uh, concerns a, a Yakuza called Goto, who um, was very, very shady and was was a real gangster. He, he, you know, he, he was a, a baddie. He wasn't a Robin Hood type of guy. And um, Jake finds out that he uh, amazingly has been able to visit the United States many, many times, even though he is a convicted um, Yakuza uh, but apparently there was no interchange of information between the Japanese National Police and the US Immigration Service um, but he was able to get a liver transplant in a major university hospital in America and this became the basis for um, a, a very very big story in which Jake's life was actually uh, in the balance as a result of it. And um, he was able to break it. And this is another amazing thing. A police officer, a detective in one of the major um, police stations was downloading porn on his work computer. And it was a file sharing site that he had to upload stuff to uh, as a, a reciprocal measure. And by mistake, he uploaded a secret file of uh, police intelligence on the Yakuza. And that went in, uh, into the internet uh, and was available. And Jake managed to get it and download it. And it was many, many gigs of data, including all the inside information about Goto. So um, that kind of cracked the case. Amazing stuff. Um, so... Uh, that's the book, Tokyo Vice, and uh, we'll now go on to talk about how it's been made into a TV series. Tokyo Vice, um, the book, uh, ha has been taken up and is available as a, a full TV series. And I actually heard about the TV series first. I was on a forum and uh, where people recommend what to watch on TV. And um, one of the members enthused about this Tokyo Vice, had a look at the trailer and was absolutely hooked on it and um, found it was a book as well. So I got hold of the book and um, I, I kind of read them almost together slightly. I started with the book first and um, then started watching the episodes. First thing about Tokyo Vice is the pilot was directed by Michael Mann. Now, Michael Mann's one of my favorite directors. He's a very visual director and um, the Japanese material really suits his style. So... Uh, the trailer alone um, is is absolutely fascinating uh, and the pilot um, didn't let me down either. The uh, star is a young actor called Ansel Elgort and he was the star of Baby Driver which is another really, really good film and he was brilliant in it. Now in this, uh, he plays Jake and he has to speak Japanese and he does it very, very well. Uh, he appears to, you know, to all intents and purposes to be fluent. Um, there's a lot of Japanese, obviously they put subtitles on it, but then, you know, there's also a lot of English dialogue. But the Japanese uh, dialogue works very, very well in this. And one of the things is, we were always told that Japanese doesn't really have profanity. And T Terry used to make up his own profanity. Uh, 
it's kind of pidgin Japanese and no one understood it uh, but when, when you see both in the book there's large sections of what the Japanese are saying and in the um, TV series um, the, the language is very powerful uh, invective insults threats and so on and uh, it's, it's, it's powerful and works very very well the other main star is uh, Ken Watanabe, who, who you'll know from Last Samurai. Great uh, actor and great in this role. And he he plays the Sekiguchi character. <clears throat> now, most of the names are changed except Jake's. And um, some of the characters are made, some of the plot is simplified for, obviously, TV reasons. Um, but... Uh, it's quite violent. Uh, there's a lot of action. There's a lot of um, insights into the Japanese culture, just like in the book. And uh, I, I thought it was quite a stunning TV series. Uh, they're talking about doing a second series, and I look forward to that eventually. Uh, but um, I, I would probably recommend reading the book first because uh, as I say the Japanese society is quite hard to understand and the more you understand about it from the book the better you'll enjoy the TV series you won't be saying well why are they doing that um, and if you've got that then you'll enjoy the TV series even more I'm not saying you necessarily have to read the book first but I, I would recommend it uh, I really enjoyed both. I enjoyed the book and I enjoyed uh, the TV series. And uh, I watched an interview uh, Jack Carr did with uh, Jake Adelstein. And I'll put a link to that as well. And he provides a lot of the background, his motivation, and kind of expands a little bit on some of the things uh, in the book. And also how it was brought to the screen. Um, superb it's been one of the highlights over the past couple of weeks of my uh, reading and viewing and I, I really highly recommend it